the Shaw U District, a plan to lease portions of the campus to outside developers to build modern retail, residential and office towers. Right now, the university doesn't have a master plan for what this district would look like. And that was a concern for the lone member of the Planning Commission to vote no on this rezoning. And without seeing the plan, it's hard for me to say that it's in the interest of the community in which the university sits. Could 40-story buildings be coming to Shaw University's campus? Shaw did not go to the city and say, hey, we want to build a 40-story building. <laughs> is, that, is that correct? Right. We wanted to open up the rezoning to go to mixed use versus straight office. Yeah, they didn't vote yes or no. Their decision was we have to push this to another meeting because they wanted to give everybody more time to think about this. People packed the room with signs like say no to rezone. It was a filled city council chambers with more than 100 people signed up to speak about the rezoning, just about 140 of them. I always have a concern that black history is going to get lost in the process. Estee Hall, Tupper Hall, Leonard Hall and Tyler Hall all stand, you know, as testaments to the resiliency of this institution. And we have every intention of preserving those. Frankly, we think where would be a more uh, appropriate location where they would be not sealed off in fences like they are now and people have to walk by and figure out what's in there, right? But, but utilize and celebrate and, and that's really what we think makes sense for all of our historical Under current entitlement, uh, Leonard Hall, for example, Tupper Hall, Leonard Hall, SD, could those be in process demolished and 12-story buildings be put on those sites uh, as of today? That's correct. We cannot prevent demolition as a state. And so you can take these buildings uh, and, and you get more high as well. I believe they moved all those buildings from other places into a, a park. Has there been any consideration about um, including something like that to in this rezoning case? Uh, not that I know of. And my, I, I'm concerned with with our students becoming a minority on Shaw University's property. I can't answer all the questions there. I just started last but, week. A lot of neglect to include students, although they say that they were trying to include us in this process. How are they going to be treated in the eyes of the public that's now being looked at as a revenue source to come on campus and basically give us money? It was a boots on the ground effort for Eugene Myrick and several others who spent their weekend passing out more than 500 of these flyers to those living in the neighborhood around Shaw University. Congregation says they have been locked out of their mosque by Shaw University and they want to know why. The school isn't offering an explanation to them or to us. Shoulder to shoulder, kneeling on prayer rugs in the cold winter sunlight, the congregation of the King Khalid Mosque held Friday services on a busy street corner. Outside the mosque, Shaw University will no longer allow them into. I am hard pressed to think of a more irresponsible and less transparent rezoning request and more consequential to come before city council in the 22 years that I have lived in Raleigh. And as we nibble away at the edges of all of these historic uh, neighborhoods, it will become easier and easier to take bigger bites out of them until they no longer exist. Everyone in this room, everyone in this room wants Shaw to prosper, succeed, and go forward. No one wants them to fail. 
but they do not have to destroy their own history to do it.